Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is a market preview for this coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, May 15th, 2013. We had a strong session today with uh, you know decent performance across the board in all the majors. Uh, the one thing to note though is there was definitely an underperformance in the, uh, in the NASDAQ. Uh, so the market was bifurcated with strength in favor of the broad market. You see the ES futures were up 1% and the Dow was up about uh, 0.8% while the uh, NASDAQ side was only up a little less than a half of a percent. So what we have here is we do have a strong strong market with a uh, uh, little, little chink in the armor with the bifurcation. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that should be sticking out is that while the market's hitting new highs, the VIX is also going up. The VIX was higher by a couple of by about 20 cents on the day here, so we're uh, actually heading the wrong way right now with the VIX. So that's kind of interesting and uh, and definitely should be noted. Okay, so looking at the majors, here's a look at the uh, ES futures. Definitely had a, a big range expansion expansion candle to the upside today, pulling away from that 8 ace level, which had contained trade. We're pushing up towards that plus 1 eighths overbought area. That's 16.58 and a quarter. And uh, the, the, the real big feature here on this chart is now we've completed nine bars up in the uh, seeker setup phase. So what we what we actually have here is the 9, 13, 9. Here's 9. Here's 1 through 9 in the green numbers. And then we've got a 1 through 13 in the countdown phase. And then we've got another setup phase here reinforcing it. So I'd expect that the market right now, even though it, it did push ahead fairly aggressively today, is going to uh, start to run into uh, a period where it needs to either catch its breath or retrace to the downside. So definitely be uh, prepared for that tomorrow. Uh, near term near term support to the downside is going to be the 8 ace level at 1625. And then the area of uh, of this congestion here where the market was using this 1620 area as support, which is also coincident roughly with the uh, with the 10 EMA. So this is the near term levels to watch. If the market is to would would roll to the downside then obviously this gap window here is going to be the n the next major level to uh keep an eye on. Moving on to the NQs, the NQs kind of had a similar session. We did push out to new highs. The NQs actually have already used now the plus 1 ace level. You can see how this this move to the upside is much more aggressive on the Nasdaq side. Uh angle of ascent is is definitely steeper than 45 degrees and we'll uh, need to retrace and I would imagine that if the uh, nine bar count that we just saw in the ES futures starts to affect the market this will uh, start to head down as well. To the downside important support is going to be 29.68 and three quarters which is the 8 ace area and the next level is going to be the the rising 10 EMA. Alright internally the, uh, the, the uh, 10 day trend uh, did move a little bit lower today the trend reading was lower on the day we're at the 1.00 baseline. We're definitely not near that 0 0.85 overbought threshold. So we definitely could see a little, a little further push if they, if they want to try and do that. But just remember, we do have that bar count on the ES future standing in our way. So this, this is one, one little point that the bulls do have, and that they can point to, saying that uh, the market, while it's extended, is not overbought near term because we don't have that overbought reading just yet. Here's a look at the SOX versus the NDX in the uh, in the weekly time frame. You can see that we're still below this key breakdown area. We did get up and push a little bit above this resistance area, but we've fallen back down a little bit lower and pulled back down. Here's the daily time frame, which kind of uh, highlights that area a little bit more. That's the key level to take. If the SOX can start to develop some relative strength here, we could definitely see a, a, a better move here and a sustainable one as well. As far as our risk on risk risk off barometer is starting to get a little bit more ex extended here it, with the SPX divided by the TLT. This uh, is definitely the, the biggest push of the year. We looked at this yesterday and kind of measured these uh, these impulsive moves to, moves to the upside. You can see we're actually back um, almost to the midpoint of this uh, regression channel. Um, you know, obviously there's there's still some room to get, to go before we get to uh, the top of the channel. The uh, the bonds were lower on the day today again. If we do uh, if we do get up anywhere near that uh, regression channel high, I would expect that the market's going to have some uh, some some si pretty significant resistance. All right, here's a look at the uh, the cumulative advanced decline lines. The, the Nasdaq side is at the bottom, and the New York Stock Exchange on the top. Um, as we've been pointing to all along here, this trend line hasn't broken, and we've been in this this positive channel to the upside here. Starting to get a little bit of uh, of an acceleration here now. Let me just uh, let me add a 
trend line. You can see we're starting to ride the uh, the top of this uh, this channel now. It's still healthy, um, and this is definitely something that you've got to got to be aware of. This is definitely a, a a very positive thing for the market. If this does start to roll, that's when the uh, then the market's really going to uh, be in trouble. But so far, this is healthy, and not not indicative of of any kind of a of a meaningful rollover at this time. If there was some some uh, downward pressure, it would probably be uh, short term until we break this uh, trend channel to the downside. All right, here's a look at the, uh, the OSX versus the oil futures. OSX is the red line. Those are the uh, produce, oil producing stocks. Oil was uh, was fairly weak again today. I expect that uh, with the breakout here in the OSX, we're probably going to see this uh, the oil the prices in the oil futures want to pull back up uh, to the upside again. Um, as long as the market doesn't take the oil stocks lower, so definitely um, be ready for that and uh, keep some uh, positive pivots handy in the uh, in the oil contracts. All right, here's the multi-sector daily chart, the comparison of the XAU, the SOX, the BTK, and the BKX. Uh, the SOX really was was kind of the laggard today. It was it was up, but it, it didn't really do anything too special. The uh, the BTK and the uh, and the uh, BKX were uh, were both uh, good performers today. The XAU still remains a source of funds, and uh, you can you can still see the money rotating out of the um, the mining stocks into the uh, more growth oriented shares. The question is how much more is there is there is there how much juice is left to squeeze from that? We've got to be getting close. Uh, I would think that if we do double bottom here in the XAU, that that would be a, a probably pretty pretty high probability long trade there. All right, let's take a look at the uh, individual sectors. Let me just sort these from uh, from best to worst. Uh, the broker dealers were the best uh, best performing sector on the day, followed by uh, housing. Transports were uh, were pretty spiffy and definitely helped uh, helped out the Dow today. Uh, the BKX outperformed the uh, the broad market down at the bottom of the list. You know the, the uh, XAU was the source of funds and and the, definitely the last last laggard. Computer hardware was fairly weak. Apple was weak and and uh, you know that whole halo effect uh, definitely uh, affected that. Utilities are are uh, starting to uh, Starting to slow down here a little bit. A uh, couple things to keep in mind here: the CMR, Morgan Stanley Consumer Index, has a 13 exhaustion in place on the seeker, and now has a, a, a count of 12 days up on the comer. So that's getting close to uh, an important area of uh, potential re exhaustion and reversal. So definitely be aware of that for that sector. Here's a look at the XBD. Uh, this is the broker dealer index. It's Pretty pretty extended here. It's getting up to that 125 area, which is at 8 ace level here on the chart. Just want to note that we're nine days up now in this uh, in this uh, seeker setup phase. So that could definitely affect trade uh, as when we go into uh, tomorrow. The uh, BTK has pushed through that risk level, so it's pretty likely that that risk level is going to be broken. Uh, we're at plus one ace right now in the GAN box. Uh, and into overbought territory. Next level to the upside is 2125, which is going to be plus two ace and, and be extremely overbought here, at least uh, in this time frame. Uh, XAU is just kind of toiling here, uh, moving, dropping just a little bit closer to the zero ace level. This is one of the reasons that a retest may be a high probability because it is the zero ace level, and uh, those are very, very important and, uh, and powerful. Looking at the socks, socks was up on the day, but was essentially just inside the prior day's candle. So if we get a breakout either way tomorrow to resolve that little inside day, it should have a little extra punch to it. And if I want to take a look, look at the oil services, which are just kind of uh, just hanging up here uh, at this 5 ace level, still positive, but really hasn't been able to, uh, to follow through and gain any momentum out of this recent breakout when we broke above the February highs. Here's a look at the crude futures. Crude futures were lower on the day. This 93.75 area is a big area. That's the 4 ace level on the uh, on the Murray Math box here. And obviously this uh, this static trend line right here off of this 9 bar count is still very much in play. Repelled price on this touch. We got up close to it but didn't quite interact with it and are starting to roll back down again here. Keep in mind we're still on the north side of both a rising 250 DMA. So while the uh, chart lacks momentum, um, it's still positive. Uh, we do have a possible MACD cross, but the MACD cross to the downside uh, would be from a not very uh, extended overbought condition. Uh, so it, while it would give some give some negative momentum to the chart, it uh, probably wouldn't wouldn't be a crusher at this point, especially with the oil services performing uh, decently.
Here's a look at the gold futures. Uh, we're not really anywhere important as far as uh, as far as price goes. We're well above that uh, that key 1375 area, which was the area of these these settlements when the uh, when the margin clerks were having their way with the chart. Re key resistance remains at uh, 4 ace at that 1500 level. Well, that's it for this evening. As always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.